you can have, have come up. So obviously it starts to move again now. <coughs> Hopefully start getting reports by our planning colleagues in the, in the future about those, those matters. Councillor Coffey. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I know we've signed up to weld um, organisation for uh, regarding climate change and controls. How will Brexit impact? And have you uh, have a, do we have a contingency for Brexit and in particular, you know, EU uh, regulations and you know, uh, EM, uh, normal and whatnot? Will they be taken back into sovereign law? And will you have an impact? Uh, will that have an impact on your way? And will you have a say on uh, trying to get that role back in the market to national control, basically, of sovereign law? Smart, smart, the, the walrus, walrus card and things like that. 
uh, but it is frustrating. Uh, there's been several reorganisations where we've lost contact with different uh, elements. We do have someone from within the council who is from the tra transportation side, so clearly there is a link to other organisations, but uh, they, they've not been actively involved uh, in terms of coming to meetings and, and, and taking part in, in different activities related to, that, to the meeting. But it's frustrating. Separately, so I don't want to be unfair to them, but it would be good if we could try and get them back on board and get back to the ground. I, I can't I can't answer on their behalf, but we know I'm invited to them yeah. to engage. Mayor's travel effectively doesn't exist now. It's the transport committee for the Liverpool City Region and Mayor. Okay. That's the end of that.
go with that switch opportunity or whether people are actually going out there and finding their own deals for cheaper energy as people get more, uh, you know, afraid with being on the internet and using search engines and finding deals themselves. But I'll, I'll check with officers who, uh, who, who work in that area and see if there's anything more we can add. Thanks for just coming back on that. I mean, if that is the case, that people are finding their own methods of finding different suppliers, is it really worth pursuing the decision? <coughs>
to become involved. Uh, it's it's a, an issue that has raised many sort of uh, well, a lot of public interest. Um, and I think this the way we conduct ourselves here, we can do it in a sensible, uh, fair manner, and, and, and only enhance the process. Thank you, Councillor Fox. Councillor Blakely. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I, I agree with Steve on that. I'm not my plea was to say, could we involve and, and, and invite the user groups as well? Will Will Dogs and all the user yes. groups, they have a great deal to offer towards this. I think it would be remiss, I'm only a deputy on this committee, but I think it would be remiss of the committee not to hear their side of it as well. Because uh, I don't think they're totally opposed to it. It might appear that way in the press, but, but I think they, they recognise children's players. Cemeteries and other areas might benefit from something like this. So I think it would be remiss of this committee not to hear what they have to say. So my plea would be to invite this one. Comments on that. that uh, I'm not sure what other organisations that are around, but it's always nice to have different views on the matter. If there's other organisations that have slightly different views, then maybe two or three sort of representations would be better than just one particular group. Okay, thanks for that, Councillor We're fortunate enough, we've got the cabinet member here who's, along with the officers, done a lot of the work on this. Anita, would you like to make a comment or some observations, please? Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, we are seen us to look um, at um, different areas on a place-by-place -place basis. And that's what's taken us a lot longer to actually look at the information that we've received from the general public and other people and make comments. In terms of organisations, um, I've agreed to meet with the organisations who have made contact with us in terms of what is good practice and those arrangements are going to uh, happen. We haven't got meeting days in place yet, but we will have shortly. And we will be listening to what they have to say. Uh, their comments are, uh, and the comments of those people will be uh, on the basis of most people will pick up after their dogs. We're not talking about everybody not picking up after their dogs. Um, and they're saying they, they could make comments like we'd be prepared to pick up after the, after the dogs if we've got like hot spot areas, etc. So that's what we would spend a little bit more time on the information that we've got back um, so that we can look at the you know the information properly to make sure that we all can sit on a place by place basis. Um, but in terms of, sort of like the discussions with those, those recommendations, the comments that we get from them will certainly be reported to this committee um, as what they recommend is that is a good way forward with this as well. So I am interested in listening to all parties. Um, I uh, also the Kennel Club as well. And in terms of the pre-decision scrutiny, I think this is a very important decision that we should have pre-decision scrutiny on this. Um, because one person will have a different opinion than another person. Um, you'll have, you've, you've got the absolute extremes where people are saying, um, no, not, not under any circumstances should my dog not be allowed to, to roam freely wherever it wants, as long as I'm there in charge of it. To other people who will say, my child is terrified, I don't want dogs off the lead even where they can run around. So we've got absolute extremes here. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted it to be brought to, uh, to this committee so that you can see what the findings are, what people have said, and then to make a decision collectively of how we take this forward. Okay? Thank you very much for that, Anita. Thank you. Uh, given, the, given the situation we're in, and given the seriousness of the issue, and the interest that it will inevitably generate um, without prejudging probably some misreporting in the local press as well uh, would it be in order for us to consider having a single agenda item special meeting so that it gets the airing it merits the topic the whole topic gets the early that it actually merits. Uh, I would certainly 
see that as a way forward. Single agenda, special, special item meeting. Yeah. Would, would that garner support from the committee? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Can, can I can I then go one further and say that we'll send round some suggested dates in January, two or three dates for the special meeting, and we'll go with the majority of those available. I think it's probably more beneficial to have a meeting than a workshop or a, a group gathering because I think we're more likely to get more members attending a special meeting than we are a group or a workshop. So, can, I'm, I'm more than happy to propose that I'll be looking for a second of that day. So, Councillor Sykes, thank you. Uh, can I have a show of hands on that, please, folks? That's unanimous. Thank you. Well, we'll be a man dogs it. <laughs> 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 well, I guess we do. And those people don't like dogs, that's what we do. I have no. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I do apologise. I have missed out the work programme. Uh, with the addition of the comment that was made before when Chris was doing his presentation on behalf of the task of finished group who was still the modern slavery, is everyone okay with, with the work programme? Is that the work programme? And smoke them, I told you. Okay, I, I have no notice of, of any other items of business. Can I thank you for your attendance? Can I thank the public for your attendance? And uh, if I don't see you before, I'll see you next week. Thank you.